Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, behind us, Atlantic City, down the shore for Fight Week. Happy Fight Week, Andre. How are we feeling? Feeling great, brother. Thanks for having me. Well, you're, I'm ha you're having me. I'm at your Airbnb with uh, Eddie Torres, Joe Pfeiffer. You guys are getting ready for a little uh, pre-fight training. So I guess let me start with Camp Man. For yeah. those who don't know, which I'm sure a lot of people watching do know, where do you train? Who do you train with? Who's going to be in the corner? Yeah, I'm... Um same same three gyms, uh, Marquez MMA, Team Taino, and Web Fitness. Um, yeah. What was the first question? It was kind of just like three questions in one. You answered most of it. Who's in your corner, and how was camp now? So I got uh, Eddie Torres um, is is my coach, and John Marquez, and then for this I have Rick Miglaris from Balance. And then, like, we've been talking about a Philly card for a long time. Obviously, this isn't Philly. Close enough, Atlantic City, not a far drive. So, like, how hype are you to have, like, a, a home fight, so to speak? I love it. Um, so, of my last, you know, four or five fights, I did I did um, Boston and I also did MSG. So, you know, I, I, prefer, I prefer on the East Coast. I've done enough uh, Vegas fights. Um, I've done enough fights at the Apex. Like, I like fighting close to home. I, I like... Um, Having my family be able to come out and, and show support and watch, and um, yeah, I, I like that. And yourself and Nurselton are on the card. Unfortunately, Sean Brady and Pat Sabatini are off the card, but I know you guys were all planning to be on the card and training together as if you were all on the card. So, like, did that add any extra level of uh, uh, intensity to training camp? Um, no, nah, I, I mean, I think that if there's any pressure on me, it's just – to get back in the win column, you know, obviously I was coming off that loss and how much stock you want to put in that loss is, is kind of on you. But, um, yeah, it's a, a fight where I got, you know, I had a full camp, like I had, you know, 10, 12 weeks notice to prepare. And, um, we've seen that when I have a full camp, like, um, you know, I, I, I improved drastically. Did you change anything after the loss or just back to work business as usual? Well, I would say one focus, and I was talking about this earlier, is like I don't regret taking the short notice fight with Pereira, but what I do regret is um, like just letting myself get too heavy, you know, like in the off season or, or um, not off season, but in between fights, you know, like I for for whatever reason I used to be with I'm, I've always been the short notice guy, so I've always been like within striking range. But for whatever reason, after the Mearshart fight, I, I just let myself get too heavy. And if I want to be able to take advantage of short notice opportunities, like I got to be within a better striking range as far as my weight goes. And now you're taking on Jacob Malkoon coming in from Australia. How do you feel about this matchup? What have you seen from Jacob? I love it. It was it was offered to me before. You know, it's a it's a grappler's delight. You know, he's. At one point, he had the highest takedown ratio of any fighter in the UFC. So that, like, that excites me. You know, like, I continue to make the argument that I am the best grappler in this division, and this will just be another feather in my cap. And then you know, before your last fight, I, I asked you, you know, how close are you from the rankings? And sure, it might be a small yeah. step back after a loss, but not really. I think your stock pretty much stays where it was. I think you're still a win or two away from those rankings. So that being said, man, like, what is next? Do you have an ideal rest of the year, like Newark, MSG? What are your thoughts? I, yeah, I like to stay active. You know, obviously, I like to fight as often as possible. That's that's how <laughs> that's how I make a living. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the more often I fight, the more money I make. So, honestly, I'd be lying if I said anything other than my priority right now is just getting better, continuing to develop, continuing to work on my weaknesses, and just making as much money as fucking possible. Like, that's really all where I'm at right now. Hear you 100%. And something I wanted to cap or highlight here is you're, shell you're selling uh, shirts and gloves yeah. for a good cause. So yeah. do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a 10-year-old student. Thanks for asking about that. We have a 10-year-old student that just got diagnosed with leukemia at our gym. And uh, we're going to be selling shirts and um, also the first ever lace-up MMA gloves. Um, and they're both available. Um, I posted a, a real a story on my, I'm sorry, I, put, I made a post on Instagram. You can find it there and go on and find the Team Taino page. And um, yeah, that we really appreciate that support. Um, you know, obviously being a father myself, um, any support for a kid, you know, an innocent kid that's sick is really, really heartfelt and much appreciated. And I'll make sure to link Andre's stuff so you guys can go check that out and support. But, yeah, a, a great cause, yeah. to, to say the least. And I have one more random question, and I asked you about this before we started rolling. It's because it's starting to rain. But a lot of fans who know that I know you are yeah, like, yeah. yo, 
What's Andre's hammer and sickle yeah. tattoo? So can you show the camera real quick what I'm talking about, if you don't mind? We got that, the hammer and sickle here. Explain the tattoo, finally, for the masses. So, well, first off, I mean, it's uh, about 15 years old, right? But my great-grandfather is from the Soviet Union. And, um, you know, the way it was explained to me by my family um, is it's the unionization of industrial workers and farmers. That was the original uh, meaning of the symbol. Obviously, 20 years later, it's been, you know, thrown into different political beliefs that I, I have no, <laughs> I have no belief in, you know what I mean? Like, you're not I, a commie. I'm not a communist by any means. I, I voted for Trump, like, <laughs> you know, like, Trump 2024. So, you know, I, I've explained this like so many times and people want to say whatever they want to say. I just let them say it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to. I mean, I'm not going to continue. I don't care. Like, whatever. Like, <laughs> I'm making money, taking care of my family. That's all I care about. It's a family tradition, to say the least, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. E easy enough. That's and nothing I nothing to do with political beliefs. We are no commies around here. But anyways, Andre, before we get out of here, man, as always, anything you'd like to say to all your fans? Just tune in. Um, Saturday is going to be shows. It's going to be fireworks. And um, I'm just excited to display everything I've been working on, all my abilities. Like, I'm just really excited. Wish it was a little warmer so we can go enjoy that shore, but doesn't matter. We got some crazy fights on Saturday night, March 30th at Boardwalk Hall. Andre Petrosky, kick, kick some ass, man. Thanks, bro.